Oh, I, I just got stopped like two blocks you know ago, yo. And you look very suspicious. Because y'all always looking at me crazy. Why you fucking hear me? You fucking with the shit! Take a fucking move! Why you, why you push me that for? Why you push me that for? Why you push me that? That's exactly how some shit will go down. Just like that. Just like that. People don't like police because of the harassment. And what civilians don't understand is that the police department is like forcing us to do these unreasonable stops or you're going to get penalized. The mayor seemed completely unapologetic about the practice. He said it has to go forward, it's necessary. Do you have the Well, I, I, I think the mayor is absolutely correct. Some people are just very hurt by it and upset when they're stopped unnecessarily. Well, what I understand that some, some people, uh, you know, you're taking away, at the very least, you're taking away people's time. So I understand people may not be happy with it. But I can also assure you that I go to the community, communities of color, people want more. So they want it's more not, Absolutely. I had this captain who walked into the precinct and gave a speech about harassing the public. His words were, we're going to go out there and we're going to violate some rights. We hear it from the captain down. We want 250s. This is stop, question, and frisk. Yeah, 116th Street between Madison and Park. Yeah, he just... He just, he stops me and then pushes me, telling me he's gonna punch me in my face. I was walking home from my girlfriend's house and a cop car went past me. A couple of seconds later, I heard the car turn around and they just popped out. They just all just jumped out the car. I decided to record it because I was getting stopped a lot and I didn't have evidence of a cop being disrespectful or anything. So I cut the button and recorded the whole thing. I, I just got stopped like two blocks you know ago, yo. And you look very suspicious. Cause y'all always looking at me crazy. Cause you keep looking back at us, man. Cause you always, y'all always looking crazy, yo. Coming up the block, always. That's our job, man. That's our, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Our jobs is to look for suspicious behavior. When you keep looking at us like that, looking back. Cause y'all always like, stop, I just got stopped like two blocks away, like. Because you keep doing that shit, man. We stopped you last Dude. time. You can listen to me. When you were walking the block with your hood up and you keep looking back at us like that, you, have you think you want to have something. Because I had my hoodie in there. Yeah, they do that. You have your hoodie on your body. Why well, because it was cold. You were going to smack me. Yeah. You want me to smack you? No, you asked me why I had a book bag on. You asked me why I had a book bag on. You asked me if I had a book bag on. Yo, why are you talking about? Why are you touching me for? He was holding me. He was going through your pocket. He was going up, down. He was going through my sweater. Then that's when that's when he told me to keep my hands on my head. So I was like this the whole time. You want to go to jail? But, but, for, for, for what? Shut for your what? fucking mouth, kid. For, what am I getting arrested Shut for? Shut your mouth. What am I getting arrested for? For being a fucking mutt, you know what? Oh, so, uh, that's a law, get, being a mutt? Who the fuck are you talking about? Cuz, you don't get here telling me why I have a hoodie, why I have a bag on the for my hoodie. He decided to take my hand from here and he put it behind my back like that. Why are you, why are you putting it on my arm way back here? No, shut your fucking mouth! You're asking me questions. Wait, weren't you a fucking explorer at one point? I, I was, and I had some fucking respect. Because that stopped me. You always stopped me for no reason. You want somebody to talk to you? Why, why are you pushing me? I'm going to break my arm. For what? For what? Who's your father? You're going to punch me in my face? He's not going to answer. He don't got a phone. You're in traffic? Nope. Yup. It's a traffic cop? Yup. Traffic Don't touch me. Okay, he's a traffic cop. Why are you pushing me out for? Why are you pushing me out for? Why they holding me? The sergeant's holding me like this. He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break your arm. I'm like, why? You, I, I'm like, you gonna break my arm? He's like, yeah. And I'm gonna punch you in the face. I was like, you gonna punch me in the face? And he's like, yeah. He's like, and then I'm gonna arrest you. I'm like, arrest me for what? And he's like, for being a mutt. So he grabbed me by my book bag and he started be pushing me down. So I'm going backwards like down the hill and he just kept pushing me and pushing me. It looked like he was gonna hit me. I felt like they were trying to make me resist or fight me back. Why you push me that for? Why you push me that? Why you? Why you? Take a fucking walk! Why you? Fucking him and you fucking with the shit! Take a fucking walk! Yo, why you touch me that? I'm mad just hearing that. Like, not many words really like could describe that. It's just, just, it's just disturbing.
but that's exactly what's happening. Like, I could relate to what you're doing because I know that situation. They just don't got no respect for us, and they wonder why we don't have respect for them. And for him, for them to just call him a name like that and just like that's just crazy. Do you think that during stops that some police officers try to provoke so that they can justify an arrest? Of course they do. A lot of police officers be trying to set civilians off, and then once they start talking, start cursing, they can lock them up for anything. There was two minorities leaning against the wall. They weren't doing anything, and my sergeant ordered me to write them blocking pedestrian traffic. If you're a certain ethnicity standing on the corner, lieutenants, sergeants, they have no problem searching you, violating your rights, and racial profiling. There was one statement that the sergeant said about what he used to do. He used to stop a guy walking down the street with baggy pants and his underwear hanging out, and he'd just stop him. He says, I know he's probably up to nothing, but I just stop him anyway just to get a 250. It's this one cop that everybody in, everybody in the neighborhood know. Stopped us like three times already. Like He was like, nah, come here. So they got out the car. They threw my, they threw my friend on the car. I'm still walking. He spun me around and punched me in my stomach. I started just patting us down, and they just left us there. What we're trying to do is, is make certain that it, it, it's done as professionally as possible, that uh, you know, proper respect is shown. It's done according to the law. This goes all the way up, all the way up to the commissioner's office, I'd say even the mayor's office, where they're trying to be proactive and say, look, we're stopping people, we're getting drugs and guns off the streets. But it's not. I think it's of, of the 600,000 people that were stopped last year, only 1% of those that were stopped were carrying weapons. The NYPD's controversial stop and frisk policy. The NYPD program known as stop and frisk. Also Last year, New York police officers stopped and interrogated people nearly 686,000 times. The public isn't aware of what's happening, but everything is being looked at as far as numbers, and it's a numbers game. Okay, what did you get last year? Well, you have to match it and give me more this year. stuff quiet. So this is my proof that they're putting pressure on me to write summonses. Commanders are trying to be proactive or show that they're being proactive. And here you have a system where people are told, get those numbers to where they should be, and you're going to get your promotion. The commanding officer wants to become a deputy inspector. The executive officer wants to become a commanding officer. If you do well by keeping the arrests up and the summonses up, you will be promoted to the next rank. So they put pressure on the police officers to generate numbers and arrests. I mean, let's be real, it is a quota. Nobody wants to call it that, but that's what it is. They call it a performance objective, they call it a goal, they can mask it however they want. It's a quota, and it does exist. Some of us under the stress make them up. Some of us under the stress stop innocent people and search them. And there's certain units out there that will just run around and stop everybody. 
what happens to the officer if, if they don't do what the police department tells them to do as far as these quotas, they will come after you. Come after you meaning transfers, give you low evaluations. They give you unwanted assignments. Put you in a post which is very dangerous, high crime, by yourself, in a corner. This is a form of retaliation. Basically, a change of tours, put you on the midnight. They make you look bad on paperwork, and that paperwork will trail you for the rest of your police career. And knowing that your livelihood's at stake, you meet the quota. It does create this feeling of, hey, listen, I gotta get my numbers. When you put that pressure on the officer, this us versus them mentality does exist. When I came into this police department, I wanted to help people. But the civilian population, they're being hunted. Instead of being protected by us, they're being hunted and we're being hated. The police department is pushing the new guys to be bounty hunters. And I use that word because that's exactly what it is. They're hunting. There's a lot of officers who are fed up and want to do something about it. And there's people who are scared. There's a lot of officers that would like to tell their story, but nobody wants to hear the truth. Nobody wants to hear the, the bad. We need police, but the police department needs to change things. At one point, I did want to be a cop to help people and mostly just like be able to wear a badge and, and a uniform and be proud of it. But now I feel like I'm not sure because they're not there to help people anymore. They're just there to like stop them, humiliate them, make them feel bad. There's no excuses for the way it's treating me. This one individual was thinking about doing NYPD. The first thing I told him is, definitely not. This job, racial profiles, will force you to do things that you don't want to do. We're supposed to be the best in the world. We're the best at making money, and we're the best at arresting and summonsing everybody. <laughs>